Welcome to Dark Horse Workshop, everybody. Today we are building a drawstring pouch for your herbs, dice, whatever you want to do with it. So let's get started. And hey, if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button if this is the kind of content you enjoy, because everybody always forgets to do that. Remember that you can pick up all my patterns and artwork on my website. Link in the description down below. You can also pick up the same patterns and artwork on a month to month basis on my Patreon, which is an amazing deal. Also a link in the description down below. If you just want to buy this pouch or any of my other builds, I've started releasing them on my website. So this one single pouch will be available for purchase if that interests you. There won't be another one. I used five to six ounce vegetable tanned leather for the main body of this pouch. It's vegetable tan because I want to do some leather carving on it. This is a two ounce pig split. If you have smooth, round leather lace, or any smooth type of lace, then going this thin on your gusset's okay. But if you have a squared off piece of leather lace, like some latigo lace, you may want to go a little heavier so it doesn't pull at your holes and possibly tear your gusset. So maybe a three ounce, play around a little bit. When you're doing leather carving, you want to make sure your leather is wet, but not so wet that it's soggy on the top. You want to give it time to kind of set and saturate throughout the piece. Once we've got all of our swivel knife cuts done, we're going to grab our beveler and go about making this not work really pop out from the leather by beveling all the lines. Remember that I link almost all the tools and supplies I use in my videos in the description of my videos, so have a look at that. Man, I only wish I could bevel that fast. Now this is a die that Lonsdale Leather has, and it's going to look like it's really light, but the thing about it is it goes on quite evenly, so it's really nice. You can just keep putting on coats and coats and build it up without it being a splotchy mess. Now you're wondering why that's important. That's important because when we're doing stuff like this with leather carving, where we have to use a paintbrush and paint with our dies, it's really easy for it not to be an even coat. That looks pretty damn good, I think. Now, I was a little worried about the thickness of this leather, so I was using very light amount of black, but somehow it's still strangely bled through that I've, I've never seen it do anything like this, and I'd be curious if anybody else has seen something like this. So I was worried about it, but watch what it does here. Like, pops through a, like a little bit of brown. Same, like a little black. Same little bit of brown here. That's not black. And then it disappears after it dried. So weird. I was super worried, but at least uh, I didn't have to do any magic paint job. Now we're going to just apply some oil and let it sit for a few hours before we burnish our edges. And then we're going to put a resist on this and apply an antique stain to it to really make our leather carving pop out. Right here, we're just buffing away any residual wax so it doesn't interfere with our finish at all. Both the front and the back. There's always a little bit left. And here, now I'm super scared about bleeding through, so I'm just 
using a marker to make sure I finish those edges just in case somebody sees behind them. I don't want it to be vegetable tan colored. Spray guns are great for finishes. If you can do it, I highly recommend it. So we rub this paste into all the cracks, then we wipe it away. After that dries, we put another coat of finish on it to protect it. And our body piece is done and it's time to do a bunch of stitching. As I was saying earlier, this pouch will be available on my website. Just the one. I'm not making another one, so just this pouch will be available. Along with all my other past builds that I have kicking around still. They're all on a big table, and if there is not one listed there that you're interested in, just send me a message and I'll put it up for you. On the far side, when I'm going up. Then I'm going on the near side, when I'm going down. Right? So that creates an angled stitch. I see this? I didn't do it there. I'm just gonna leave it, because that's an example. That's on the bottom. But that's where I went this side up and this side down. So your stitches can get all crazy if you're doing this kind of stitching. If you want consistency in your stitching, you've gotta make sure far side close, far side close. Unless you want that, you can always alternate. You can always go boop, 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 boop. But it looks better if it's angled, angled, angled. There can be some residual wax left over from your thread, so I like to go around with my heat gun and give it a little blast to get rid of any of that. This is just a little stopper for our lace to move through. So the stopper's hole size should be like a little smaller than your lace, honestly. You, you wanna really have to work to get the lace through it so that when you push it closed, it stays closed. camera wasn't rolling but I cut them shorter and then split these ends in two so they got these little fringes. everybody I'm gonna pop another video up here for you to check out make sure you do that if you like this video hit the like button if you enjoy this kind of content make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of my videos and until next time keep on being creative in whatever it is you do